the Victoria Gallery and Museum Sculpture Walking Tour. Join us on a trail across the University of Liverpool campus as we discover some of the outdoor artwork on display. This VGM Sculpture Walking Tour is the full version and will include detailed descriptions of each of the sculptures during the walk. There is also a short version available on our YouTube site. We begin in the quadrangle behind the Victoria Gallery and Museum with our first sculpture on the Ashton Building. The figures on the Ashton Building are by William Burney Rind. Rind was a Scottish based sculptor who rarely worked beyond the border, but he twice made an exception for Liverpool. His sculpture on the facade of the Liverpool Cottage Exchange no longer exists, so these are the only remaining examples. They are typical of his elegant neoclassical style and are an allegorical figure representing the arts. Our next sculpture is also in the quadrangle, just beyond the grass between the Johnston and George Holt buildings. Walk across to the Red Between. Red Between by Philip King. King is an abstract sculptor who studied under Anthony Caro and was an assistant to Henry Moore. Red Between was created while the artist was rethinking his way of working. Originally, the forms were low on the ground. King had a two year pause and when he returned to the sculpture, he decided to raise the forms off the ground. He felt the space around it added dynamism acquired with the support of the Arts Council in 1977. We now move on to our next sculpture. The statue of Shemaya is situated outside the Harrison Hughes building, just off the quadrangle. Shemaya is by Sean Rice. Rice was a unique and innovative Liverpool-based sculptor who taught at the Liverpool School of Art. His work can be seen around the city with many pieces in Liverpool Metropolitan Cathedral. Rice often used religious themes for his figurative studies, and Shemaya, seen here, is a prophet from the Old Testament. The sculpture is on loan from the estate of the artist. Continue walking past Shemaya and walk towards Brodie Tower. Look up to the right-hand side and you will notice lettering on the side of Brodie Tower. Lettering by Maxwell Fry. The names of famous engineers are displayed in precast concrete on a curved wall for added impact. Maxwell Fry is regarded as the father of the modern movement in architecture in Britain, and he believed that buildings should be carefully matched to their environment. He was born in Wallasey and studied at the university's School of Architecture. Turn around and walk back towards the Victoria Gallery and Museum and Quadrangle. Stop by the archway between the Ashton Building and George Holt Building. Look up and you will see a pair of sphinxes sitting above the archway. Pass underneath the archway and go towards the Harold Cohen Library steps. You will now see a better view of the sphinxes if you look up towards the Ashton Building archway from this side. Sphinxes by William Burney Rind Although hundreds of people walk through this archway every day, not many look up to see the pair of sphinxes perched on top. Mythical creatures with a human's head and lion's body, they appear in several classical civilizations, including ancient Egypt, where they usually represent protection from evil. While you are standing on the Harold Cohen Library steps, turn around and face the library. Look up and you will see our next sculpture above the window. Learning by Eric Kennington The figure holds a key and a lantern and she stands before an open book, which are all symbols of learning. Kennington enlisted as a soldier in the First World War and he became an official war artist during that conflict and the next. During peacetime, Kennington undertook commissions for war memorials or figures for public buildings such as this. You are now heading to the next sculpture, which is a short walk away. 
continue your walk down Ashton Street. We are heading towards West Derby Street between the William Henry Duncan and Ronald Ross buildings. This walk will take approximately five minutes. Form A by Susan Forsyth. Forsyth was commissioned by the university to create a sculpture complementing the space adjacent to the biosciences facilities. This nuclear grade stainless steel structure has echoes of the surrounding buildings, while the form resembles strands of a replicating chromosome and can be perceived as a striding figure. Pass the sculpture and go between the Ronald Ross and William Henry Duncan buildings. Head towards University Square and the road that divides the University of Liverpool Student Guild and the Mathematics Building. Once on University Square, pass the Career Studio, which will be on your left-hand side. The Riley Building and Student Guild will be on your right. Stop on the left-hand side just by the gate to the Mathematics entrance. Open Metal Gatework and Screen by John McCarthy. The gate and screen are both inspired by mathematics and the design incorporates mathematical symbols in an abstract way. McCarthy also designed a five panel terracotta mural for the Mathematics and Oceanography building based on the growth of mathematical ideas in science and technology. To get to our next sculpture, go under the archway between the Mathematics Building and the Career Studio. Go past the Augustus John pub, which will be on your left hand side. The next sculpture is situated just outside the Central Teaching Hub building. Square with Two Circles by Dame Barbara Hepworth. Hepworth was one of the very few female artists of her generation to achieve international recognition. Although modernist in her use of abstract forms, she was influenced by the monolithic power of ancient standing stones. Here, Hepworth uses circles cut out of the bronze sculpture to explore the relationship between occupied and empty space. Just beyond square with two circles is our next sculpture on the building just in front of you. The central teaching hub has a frieze running around the outside of the entranceway. Abstract Frieze by Frederick Bush. Bush was a lecturer in sculpture at Liverpool College of Education during the 1960s, although he spent most of his life in Scotland. His art was on a monumental scale and produced in reaction to its environment. This frieze was commissioned for the science faculty and represents the disintegration of matter. The panels at either end are almost whole, but they become more fragmented towards the centre where the doorway is. For our next sculpture, go past the central teaching hub Walk down the road through the avenue of trees. Our next sculpture will be on the left hand side, just outside the central teaching lab, opposite the Chadwick building. Three Uprights by Hubert Dolwood. The three forms can be seen as three talking figures. The artist considered two forms would have been too few and four too many. Dolwood won a competition to design this piece, which is cast in aluminium. He was one of the leading British artists of his time and taught at several institutions, including the Royal College of Art. This piece was installed in 1959, the year Dolwood won the John Moores Prize with Large Object. We will now head towards the University of Liverpool Sports Centre. From there, we pass it on the right hand side and head towards the crossing. Once over the crossing you are now in Abercrombie Square and the next sculpture is just in front of you. Liverpool Heroes Memorial Statue by Tom Murphy This bronze statue is dedicated to war hero Captain Noel Chavas 
who died in 1917 and was the only man to be awarded the equivalent of two Victoria Crosses during World War I. The memorial also names 15 further Victoria Cross recipients who were born in Liverpool. Its creator, Tom Murphy, is one of Britain's leading monumental sculptors, whose work includes the Hillsborough Memorial and statues of Bill Shankly at Anfield and John Lennon at the airport. For our next sculpture, still staying on Abercrombie Square, past the sculpture by Tom Murphy and head towards Abercrombie Square. The grassy area can be entered through a side gate and you can cut across the park. We're heading for the far corner, across past the pavilion. Centenary Victoria Cross Stone This stone honours Captain Noel Chavas, son of the Anglican Bishop of Liverpool. He worked as a doctor at the city's Royal Southern Hospital. After enlisting, Chavas was surgeon to the Liverpool Scottish Battalion. He was awarded the Victoria Cross for bravery, tending to wounded soldiers during the Battle of the Somme then awarded a bar, which is the equivalent of a second Victoria Cross, posthumously, for treating the wounded under fire during the Battle of Passchendaele. He died of injuries sustained at the time. You have now successfully completed the campus sculpture tour. More sculptures may be added or removed over time due to building work and new commissions. Please check back regularly for updates.